Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the G Show. No, G, it's the GCN Show. It's not, can you just do that? Yeah, okay. I thought you were a pro. Sorry, mate. sorry. C Welcome on. to the G Show. GCN Show, just cut it. <laughs> Is that Gary Thomas? Yeah. Doing welcome to the GCN show. I'm glad he called it the show and not the spot. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to the GCN show. Coming up, we discuss whether or not cycling or pro cycling is just about to go through a huge change. Yeah, plus we've got a belting new competition. Loads and loads of great hacks. So um, we are loving these at the minute. And the bodges love them. And the bodges, yeah. Plus we've got tweet, caption, and comment of the week. And all our regulars. Oh, and if you're wondering where Matt is, He's on a super exciting mission. So, over to you, Matt. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Uh, I'm here live in Palmer in Mallorca. We've been given exclusive access to Team Sky's track sessions. On the track at the moment is new signing Mikel Lander, come across from Astana to Team Sky for the 2016 season. Also, we've been talking to Michal Kwiatkowski, the former world road champion from Poland and Wales, his very own G, otherwise known as Grant Thomas. You've got to watch these videos coming soon. Back to you guys in the studio. I hope he's all right out there. It looks like he's got earache or something. Yeah, or an ear infection. I don't know. Why did he have his finger in his ear the whole time? Love your jumper, by the way, Si. Oh, thanks, mate. I was thinking you looked like a bit of a pudding today. La, 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 la. And one octave higher. La, 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 la. It's competition time. We said we would have a belter for you. Check this out. You can win a pair of Reynolds carbon fibre coat hangers. Amazingly light. They are. Well, they're designed for lightweight, as you'll notice down there. That's a shallow rim profile. Let's oh, put some more aerodynamic one. Now, you can win a pair of these, but how? Well, what you have got to do is send us in your festive cycling related photo. So we want you to dress up as festive as possible. Maybe decorate your bike with I don't know, baubles and glitter and tinsel and everything else. Maybe in the snow, maybe doing something with your turbo trainer. Whatever it is, the five most festive looking cycling related photos will receive a pair of these each. And don't put them on social media. We're not going to find them there this time because we've got a separate competition page, the link to which you can find in the description just down below. Now we know you can all use your imagination and come up with some amazing stuff, but as a hint, I'd suggest you might need to go slightly more festive than, than Dan and I right now. We, uh, we could have pushed the boat out a bit more. A one, two, three, four. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. All one man is to ride on the horse open sleigh. Time now for hat forward slash bodge of the week, a segment which I'm enjoying more and more as the weeks go by. So first up, we've got Dubs MX13. He's managed to make a GoPro mount for the front of his bike, which fits behind his front brake caliper, which is a definite hack. You definitely think it's a hack? Yeah. I think it's a hack. Now this next one, I'm, the jury's still out, okay? Because Just Roadie Things have sent in a picture of a pair of Nike Air Max with SPD cleats drilled into the bottom, which is very cool but I'm slightly concerned about getting my foot out of the pedal and not just pulling it straight out of the yeah, shoe. I don't care if that's a hack or a bodge, it just looks amazing. Uh, looks next amazing. up, we have one sent in from FJack000, who seems to have made a bodge, which probably makes his life even harder, uh, because he appears to be sweeping with a broom which has a set of road handlebars attached to the top, which I can't imagine is that easy, uh, and has decided that he needs to wear a helmet to do that job now. Yeah, yeah, that is a bodge, I'm sorry about that. Now. This next one from Peter Linkfist is uh, it's quite cool actually. So he has put an R saver on his mud guards to give even better coverage. Now, I think the performance is probably up there with hacks, but perhaps the execution might be a bit of a bodge. I bet it works though. I bet it does work exceedingly well. Right, we're gonna finish this week with Stephen O'Sullivan who thinks he's trumped last week's hack of putting uh, reflective tape on the back of a bike. Because he I think has he covered has. his entire frame set with reflective tape. I mean, that does stand out like a sore thumb, which is kind of what you want. It does, but that bike is kind of notable for other things. If you look, he's got different size front and rear wheels, if I'm not mistaken. Well, he's got a mountain bike tire and a road tire. And a 26 bike, inch. No brakes. Yeah, but he, like you say, he does have bar ends, so that's kind of cool. It does stand out for more than one reason, like you said, so. Yeah. Don't forget to send us in your hacks and bodges for next week. As I said, really loving these. You can use the hashtag GCN hack. Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we will find it there. Go, man, keep digging. Go, go, go. Go, go. And... 
Caption competition now. And first of all, let's have the results of last week's caption show. Thanks, mate. And the winner is Samuel Mumby. Nice work, Samuel. His caption was, after 12 hours of intensive research and the combined minds of Britain's brightest sports scientists, Matt still can't clip in in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> One. First Yay! Time. Very well done. Get Quite. in contact with us and Quite. we shall send you out our swag. Quite accurate as well, actually. Mm. Now, this week's caption photo, Dan, yeah. do you want to get it started? Yeah. Oh, no. Now G10 are going to use me in their caption competition and make some sort of caption which relates to Matt Stevens coming off a cyclocross bike. <laughs> Click on me! <laughs> That's a good one. If you think you can beat it, and I suggest you probably can, stick your caption in the comment section down below. Do you know who that is, by the way? I can't recognise him from that position. I saw it written underneath the photo, Wout Van Aert. Ah, uh, it's not just you recognise him. Of course it's Wout Van Aert. Yeah, you can tell from his backside. Ah! Uh, next up, it is comment of the week. We've got three for you, despite the fact there's only two of us here on the couch today. So we'll do two with me, one of side. First up... Hang on, I want to do two. I do? All right, we have to do the second two then, because I'm doing the first one. Okay. And it came underneath, how to choose winter cycling kit, cold weather clothing guide. It came from Anthony Rochester, who said, if it's minus 10, I'd recommend wearing slippers, a dressing gown, and sitting by the fire inside. Which is, I think, a fair point. That is a good tip, actually, as well, except I think you're missing out. Anyway, my first one comes from uh, How to Untangle a Chain, and uh, Epic Moz said, uh, This is really useful because last time I tried to untangle my chain, I ended up having to call the fire brigade to cut me and some passing dog walkers free. So with this step-by-step -step guide, I think I'll be okay in the future. So I'm really glad to hear that, actually. Um, and then I'll move swiftly on to the last one, shall I? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, right, so stay safe riding the rain. The Stiffmeister 7 said uh, Bon Jovi made an entire album covering this problem in 1986, didn't he? I wouldn't remember, but uh, Matt probably would have done, wouldn't he? I wouldn't remember just because I was only six. But you bought the album a couple of years later, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I've got it on my Spotify playlist now. <laughs> there is actually a fourth comment, kind of comment. Oh, so can I have that one to even things up? If you want. Uh, I don't even know what it is. It's not on the script. <laughs> no, you know, we just talked about it a minute ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been uh, getting some more tweets in where people have photoshopped our faces onto some other famous people. I'm not saying that we're famous, but other people <laughs> who are famous. Uh, and somebody's put us onto the Great British Bake Off with people outside the UK probably know nothing about, but it's a huge TV show here. And I am Paul Hollywood, who has a slightly bigger face than me. And Matt, <laughs> incredibly, is Mary Berry which just looks incredible. You actually can't really tell the difference between the two. Matt actually does look like Mary Berry would see. No comment about me being a woman again. Oh, but, so you know. I'm happy now that I've got an equal number of comments. <laughs> this weekend, the Cyclocross Circus stopped off the Spa Francorchamps F1 circuit for round five of the Super Prestige Series. Now, this is always a really hard circuit, but the muddy conditions this weekend made it into a true epic. It really did, actually. Wout van Aert coped the best with the conditions. He put a minute into Sven Nace and Kevin Powell to take victory. And world champion Matthew van der Poel had, well, frankly, a nightmare race. But he did post this excellent sequence of photos to Twitter later, <laughs> which uh, showed him crashing headfirst into a mud pit and undoubtedly would have saved his day slightly. It's good of him to put those photos up. It was, yeah. Page, wasn't it? Uh, meanwhile, in the women's race, Helen Wyman rode a very smart and well-paced race to, in the end, comfortably take the victory over compatriot Nikki Harris, who finished second. Before we finish with Sartre Cross Those Side, did you know that Sven Nace now has his own team? Well, I kind of know because you told me about half an hour ago. I'm supposed to be... Sorry, no, really? Yeah, he's been chosen to run the Telenet Fidea team. That's going to be really interesting, actually. In his first year of retirement, what's he going to do with those guys? Mm. Now, if you have had your ears to the ground over the last week or so, you'd be forgiven for thinking that cycling, pro cycling at least, is on the verge of complete change. But is it really? Well, let's look at the facts first of all, shall we? Two major sponsors have announced that they will both be pulling out of the sport as of 2016. So Rabobank will be calling time on 20 years involvement in professional cycling, and that's going to be a major blow for the women's scene. Then over on the men's side, Oleg Tinkoff has also said that he is going to walk away. Yeah, Tinkoff's announcement was slightly less dignified, but essentially yeah. he said that pro cycling is stuck in the mud, and good luck to anyone who decides to stick with the sport. 
Jaguar have also announced that along with Rafa, they're going to be pulling out of Team Sky, leaving potentially a bit of a hole. And let's not forget about the riders as well. Alberto Contador and Fabian Cancelar have both said that 2016 is likely to be their last. And that's going to leave well, a pretty big void for a lot of cycling fans, isn't it? Mm. And I guess all that added up might sound quite bad. But actually, it's sort of part and parcel of the sport. So sponsors do come and go, as do riders, some leaving a much bigger hole than others. Now, on the other hand, last week in Italian newspaper, Milano Finanza, now my Italian's not great, but I think that means Milan Finance, there was a report that China's richest man, uh, Wang Jialin, is interested in buying all three of the Grand Tours. Now, that might sound like pie in the sky, but actually, when you consider that that man is worth around $30 billion, he can certainly afford it. And very recently, he actually purchased the World Triathlon Corporation for $650 million. So actually, this might not all be pie in the sky talk at all. No, those, uh, the World Triathlon Corporation actually owns the Ironman franchise. So yeah, that is a pretty big player. Now, what would happen if one person owned all of cycling major races isn't actually all that clear, but potentially it would give him the power to actually push through those reforms that guys like Tinkoff and Velon all want to actually get done. Mm. So what's your opinion, Si? Would one man owning all of the sports be a good thing? No, I don't think it would, actually. So I've been giving this a bit of thought, actually, and when you hear guys like Tinkoff talking, what they really want is for a small number of people to have you know, to make money out of cycling. But actually, that's going to be at the expense of cycling fans, largely, because it will mean that we'll have to pay more to watch races on the telly. Potentially, we'll have to pay more to, you know, to watch races on the roadside. And at the moment, cycling's great. If you want to set up a pro team, there's not really a big barrier for entry. Equally, if you want to put on a pro race, you can kind of do that too. And, and I think it would make it rather more elitist, even though some people will be making more cash. So. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I think that it could potentially be good for those working within the sport. They might well make some more money because if one person owns all the big races rather than grinding against each other as they do at the moment, everyone would be going forward with a common cause. But take the Premier League here in the UK, players earning incredible amounts of money. Any better for the spectators? Probably not. Nope. Anyway, the UCI also held a two-day meeting last week in Barcelona where they discussed the um, reforms that they had planned for 2017, which weren't going down very well in certain places. All the stakeholders were there, and when they came out the other end, there were some announcements, and it seems like those reforms were actually quite minimal. Yeah, kind of playing a bit second fiddle to uh, Milan or Finanza's report there, wasn't it? But, you know... Sticking with the changing face of pro cycling, it's not just teams and races and riders that might have a bit of a different feel soon. Tech, as well, is getting a bit of a kick up the arse. Yeah, much has already been said about the continued trials of disc brakes in the pro peloton, especially following on from our in-depth video analysis on the subject involving a chorizo sausage on the slopes of the Col de Tourmalet, a video which no doubt heavily influenced the UCI's decision on the matter. However, there is one thing that could really stop disc brakes in their tracks. Oh. See what I did there? I did, mate. That was great. Now, according to UCI technical manager Mark Barfield, in a great interview with Cycling Tips, the UCI now has the minimum weight restriction limit firmly in their sights. So, a bit of a backstory. This minimum weight restriction was introduced back in the year 2000 to try to ensure the safety of riders' bikes, but let's face it, that's quite a crude thing to do, really. So now Barfield and his team are looking to remove the weight restriction and actually test the bikes themselves for safety, which is a novel idea indeed. Yeah, and if they did remove that weight restriction, what we could see is a number of manufacturers scrambling around trying to make a lighter bike because what you'd have is a number of riders who would be left on a bike, which is a little perhaps over seven kilograms, whereas other riders would have the facility with their bike sponsors to be on a bike which only weighed five kilograms. Now, two kilograms doesn't sound like much, but over the course of a climb like Alpe d'Huez for the top riders, you're looking at something like a 40 second difference. Multiply that by the number of mountains in a Grand Tour, and that's the difference between winning and scraping a top five. Yeah, so that is pretty big, and therefore people are not going to be using disc brakes, let's face it. Now, another regulation change that's rather more subtle but has probably more impact on a, uh, on a personal level is uh, the removing of the horizontal saddle rule. So again, according to Barfield in this interview with Cycling Tips, British Cycling sent the UCI a dossier of injuries 
that riders sustained from this horizontal saddle roll. Now, I dread to think what this dossier actually looked like, but Barfield saw sense as well as an awful lot of other things <laughs> uh, and has removed the restriction uh, as of now, I think, actually. Oh, happy uh, days. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure whether Barfield's actually able to sleep at night without nightmares. But imagine if that dossier got out in the public domain. That would go viral. Uh, a number of teams have been showcasing their 2016 team kit, their respective training camps over the last week or so. Amongst them, Team Sky, Team Katusha, I Am Cycling, and also Team of Saxo, but with a training kit. Yeah, so Team Sky have only made some fairly subtle changes by adding a white and light blue horizontal stripes across the kit. I like it, but some people have said that it looks faintly reminiscent of the Estonian National Champs kit, and I can understand why. Yeah, I can see why as well. Uh, Katusha, meanwhile, will still be in red next year. In fact, they will be almost completely in red. That is very red. Although I do really like it, particularly with those big K's on the front. When you see that long team lineup, that really stands out and should stand out in the peloton next year, which can only be a good thing. Yeah, it's very cool. And actually, Katusha apparently are launching their own clothing lineup for Thanks cycling. For so uh, yeah. Anyway, Yam Cycling are going from navy blue to almost all white, uh, which is a, a bold move and uh, one where I guess the Ryan is going to be hoping that firstly they get an absolutely shed load of kit and secondly that the team washing machines are working well because otherwise they'll end up with yeah. brown shorts like AG2R. Yeah, very true. Uh, lastly then, Tinkoff Saxo. You remember this time last year they released a separate training kit which had a camo appearance. This time it looks like this. Which I have to say, I didn't like the look of when I first saw it on social media, but having seen a load of pictures since then, it has started to grow on me. I do quite like it now. Mm, I like it. I like their camo kit and I like their Ladacha kit, whatever they call it. Very so cool. thumbs up to all the new kits so far. Well, Basically, yeah. Uh, apart from possibly I am cycling. But, you know, <laughs> anyway, still, we like it. Now, moving away from cycling shorts, just for one minute, Dubai Tour have announced their lineup of teams for uh, next year. And they've done considerably better than the Tours of Oman and Qatar because 10 out of the 16 teams are World Tour teams. One of the other teams is Teams Wiggins with Wiggins, uh, and so with him and Mark Cavendish and Taylor Finney, they've got a pretty star studded lineup. Yeah, they've done well there. It's going to be good. Talking of stars, a slightly fading one, Pipo Pozzato, that's going to go down well with some people, Bad luck, uh, has confirmed that he will spend the next two years with the Southeast Pro Cycling Team, which is an Italian based Pro Conti squad, uh, and probably spend that time trying to get back the form which saw him winning Milano Sanremo almost 10 years ago. Can you believe that? Was it 10 years ago? Mm. Crikey. Now, one team that had a terrible start to their training camp for, well, 2016, was Trek Factory Racing. They had two pile-ups within, what, 100 metres of the team hotel? The roads are slippy out there in Spain. On the first ride of their training camp. Exactly, yeah, and including Fabian Cancellara, he went down as well. But it was uh, Zoidal who came out uh, worst. He broke his collarbone, poor guy. So, uh, I mean, of all the times to break a collarbone, December is the best you know, from a recovery perspective, but still, what a bummer. Yeah, get well soon, Ricardo. Indeed. We shall leave you this week, in our cycling short segment at least, with this, a video of Marcel Cattell in a wind tunnel. I don't need to say any more than that. I bet you don't say any more, mate. You're probably looking at him slightly worried that he might be taking your crown as... We've done this video before. Yeah, we have. I stood there with a fan, pointing it at your face. Go on, Tan. You're amazing. Oh, I'm such a fan. And I did it in uh, California with a hairdryer. Don't talk semantics to me, Neil. I'm here to win. Hmm. Hmm. Dom has chosen two tweets for us again this week. The first of which comes from Nicky Harris, who had this shot from the podium of the Super Prestige Cyclocross race, saying, I've witnessed a lot of strange things in Belgium, but this was something on a whole new level. Nightmares for life. And I can see why. Yeah, that is terrifying. It's what Mark Barfield, the UCI technical manager, has been saying as well, actually, after Nightmares that British cycling life, yeah. dossier. Now, the second tweet he's pulled out is from Geraint Thomas, who posted a picture of an ECG with the, uh, with the words boy or girl, to which he obviously got many congratulations because that's great news, except for the fact that actually it was just his ECG, which he then posted the next day. <laughs> so, uh, nice. He Go loves on. a joke, doesn't he, G? Great bands, G, great bands. It's got all the best books of this, parts of this, are in this. He had to get his book in. Best uh, unbelievable. book out there. Stop it, just cut. 
Coming up on the channel this week, my word, we've got some treats for those guys. We have. Christmas come early for you lot. So on Wednesday, we are going to discuss how much protein does a cyclist need? I mean, really. Really need. need. However, when you start training regularly, the breakdown of tissue happens at a far greater rate. And that's partly down to extra mechanical stress and partially because your body can start using lean muscle. And then on Thursday, we have got the top 10 countries in the world which are best for cycling. As voted for, in fact, by you. Which is your number one country for cycling. Mm. Find out on Thursday. Yeah, and then on Friday, it's a double whammy. So first up, it is Pimp My Commute. Now, many of you will remember James as the genius designer and technician behind our homemade rollers. And he regularly commutes to work, which is about 14 and a half miles from Bristol into Bath. And he does so using this. Using this. Using this. Thank you. And then the second video is this. How to choose your lights for commuting. So for example, the fact that it should be USB rechargeable and that the mount should be very easy to put on and take off. And when it comes to those all important lumens, we think that 400 is a minimum for being able to see where you're going on dark roads. And crucially as well, you also find that you won't blind oncoming traffic. Saturday, we have two pro bikes, or either we've got one pro bike, which is class fan torn out, and then one presenter bike, which, which is one of us. Oh, we said we were gonna put that out last week. No, oh, it's coming, it's still coming, don't you worry, it's coming out. Monday, we're back in the workshop, you know, and we've got how to actually create your own home workshop. So the five top tips to get that as good as it can be. And then uh, Tuesday. La 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 la. And one octave higher. It's not just the GCN show, it's the GCN Christmas special show. That's right, where we'll probably all be wearing Christmas oh, I pudding wait. jumpers. I can't see your photos of, you know, glittering bikes with tinsel on. It's going to be brilliant. Extreme corner, although, although perhaps we should call it something different because it's. It's the third week running that Danny McCaskill. Well, it's Danny again. again. It's Danny that again. Guy that was yeah. in our office a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So, Danny McCaskill corner. He's actually blown us away with this new one, isn't he? You right yeah, there? really good. Yeah, I've got the cramps. Oh, it's a tough life. Oh, it's impressive, I must admit. It is bonkers. Probably a bit much having it three weeks in a row, but still impressive nonetheless. It's fine. Uh, now, it's that point in the show which is really sad because I have to tell you that we're almost at the end of it. But <laughs> we've got a couple more videos to throw to you, for, to throw you to now. Some really good ones. So up here is Cy Matt's video on saddle height and is there a most efficient saddle height? And they use science for that and everything. We actually do use science. It is very illuminating, that one. Or if you're in the market for some new winter clothing, and I guess you probably are, given that for a lot of us now, it is definitely winter. Click down there and you get through to our guide, taking you through exactly what you should be looking for. And uh, basically, it's quite close to our heart, that issue, isn't it? Given how many times over the years we've been cold yeah. on bikes. Yeah, very true. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Don't forget, if you've liked this video, you can let us know that you've liked it by liking it with the thumbs up just down below. Oh, and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. You can do that for free by clicking anywhere within this, this box. That on our festive top. cells. Oh yeah, let's click on the... Uh, click on the pud. Oh, they like, yeah, sort of chain glow puddings. Yeah, it probably doesn't look very nice. You'd want to pick the icing off, wouldn't you? 